Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and in this video, I will be telling you five most difficult scenarios I have ever faced in my programming career and sometimes we do get this question in interview that tell me the most difficult scenario you have ever worked on. So instead of one, I'll be telling you five but the intention from this video is to make you aware about the scenario one and then tell you how to explain the answer of it. I don't want to or I don't have any intention that you copy the same scenario in your own interview because scenario should come from your own experience not from mine but uh, you can take the reference of it and then you can uh, relate it with your own scenario. So the number first scenario. Number first scenario is CPU timeout limit. In my career I once got a project where this was a mini project was to remove the CPU timeout. So the client org was getting complex CPU timeout on different different transaction and that mini project was given to multiple service based organization and the same challenge was thrown to all of them and the intention was to remove the CPU timeout whosoever will be able to solve it with the best possible manner will be given the project okay so that project was a very challenging project and we first identified all the possible causes of cpu timeout we analyzed all the transaction we analyzed all the process automations available on that object and then we try to solve that by using the asynchronous apex optimizing the code optimizing the workflows process builder sometimes converting them into flows and then we presented our way of betterment and then we presented a demo on how we can solve it problem on solving it on one of the object it was getting on multiple objects but we solve it on one of the object and we ultimately got that project okay so that was the first scenario and cp timeout is a very common uh, error when we have a heavy transaction in all uh, so that was the first scenario guys see intention from these kind of question is that you first explain why you think a particular scenario is difficult then you tell what you did to solve it okay so you have to answer it in multiple folds okay second scenario was we worked i mean i worked in a project where we needed to integrate sap with salesforce and then there were a couple of upstream and downstream systems but the data for transformation in this integration was a bit difficult because the way SAP sees the data versus the way we uh, have data in Salesforce, it's very difficult. Like for example, account is a single table in Salesforce. So a single account will have billing address as well as shipping address. Whereas in SAP, we have uh, ship, to, uh, uh, ship to customer, bill to customer as a separate table. So within account, we have multiple tables. So we needed, we needed to transform the data in a manner that SAP will be able to listen. I mean, sometimes, sometimes these data transformation calls and discussion takes a lot of time. So we'll have to be very careful when we build such kind of integration because one wrong step in the beginning will uh, you know will be a lot of technical depth for you in future so this was the second very difficult project okay the third one was a row lock error okay in one of my uh, project the company was facing row lock errors and uh, we get row lock error whenever multiple processors or multiple users try to get access to the data and tries to perform data so, operations on that particular record simultaneously so sometimes the other user will get the row lock error because someone else is or uh, uh, is or modifying that record or trying to edit that record uh, before that other person so row lock will occur we'll have to optimize our SQL query we'll have to remove the over dependency on few records we'll have to remove all the data sq ownership sq we are facing and then once we optimize our query once we use for update for SQL query we will be able to resolve that issue so identifying the issue is more important here because solving is not that difficult but identifying sometimes take more time because we have to go through the whole transaction at once that was the third case on the fourth scenario uh, i have worked for a very uh, big company and uh, the automation was built on case object but the problem was that cases were getting routed to different different queue in a in a you know, wired manner like there was no pattern at that time so the reason uh, was that because there were so many automations written on the same object so 
Sometimes we have automations on uh, via workflow rules, process builders, triggers and flows and all of them are trying to run each other and the cases was getting stuck and customers were not getting resolution of their query and that was impacting not only the SLM but also the actual CSAT score of representative. Sometimes customers were very furious, they'll go to uh, Twitters and uh, uh, X and then try to you know say that they're not getting resolution. So trying to root cause was very important. We tried to consolidate all the automations in a single go, in a single automation tool, and then try to make sure that there is a uh, there is a constant flow of record so we are not using all and every possible automation like there is an assignment rule and then there is a trigger who is doing all the all the automations rather than every automation tool doing that so that was also a very good project and the last one is the heap size issue so one of my clients wanted to upload the attachment but attachment size should be more than 2 gb okay and uh, the actual salesforce file upload component do upload up to 2 gb but they that has a progress bar and the customer wanted not to have that progress bar so that project became bit tricky because we needed to create this file upload component custom and then we try to upload the file obviously we have 6 mb heap size so we'll obviously be getting the heap size issue and it can be image so you cannot even move to asynchronous because that also has 12 mb heap size so if it is more than 12 MB, obviously you will get the heap size issue. And it's not like whole 12 MB or 6 MB is available because some MBs will be stored for processing. So actually you'll not be able to process more than 4.5 MB in reality. So you needed to uh, split the complete data into chunks of data in your JS file and then process those chunks.